So let's go ahead and look at acids and bases. So after this video lecture, students will be able to differentiate between the various definitions of acids and bases. Um, additionally, students will be able to identify the species present in solution, such as acid-base conjugates, as well as their precursor species. So the various acid-base definitions that we're going to be looking at are Arrhenius, Lewis, and Bronsted-Lowry. So let's go ahead and focus on the Arrhenius model. Okay, so the Arrhenius model for acids basically state that H plus ions, or um, protons, as they will be sometimes called, are going to increase when you place an acid into water. Okay, so if I take something like HCl and I place it into water, okay, what's going to happen is it's going to disassociate into H plus and chloride ions. So in this context, an Arrhenius acid is going to increase the H plus concentration or the proton concentration in solution. Um, bases, Arrhenius bases, are going to increase the hydroxide ion that is present in solution. Okay, so if I take something like sodium hydroxide, it's gonna happen, it's gonna disassociate um, into sodium ion and hydroxide ion, and you're going to see an increase in the number of hydroxide ions present in that solution. Okay, so this is the Arrhenius definition. Um, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. Um, it's not the one that we'll typically use uh, to define things. We're going to actually be focusing mostly on the Bronsted-Lowry. Um, however, we should be familiar with Arrhenius's approach. Okay, so the Lewis model, um, which is one that actually won't show up on the AP exam, but we're going to be sharing it anyway. Um, the acids from the Lewis model are going to be known as electron acceptors. Okay, and the bases are going to be electron donors. And so uh, the Lewis model is really helpful when you don't have um, protons or hydroxide ions to be donating to the solution. Okay, so an example or, or setup uh, for Lewis uh, acid base model would be the following. So in this case, we have ammonia. Okay, um, the electrons here are going to be donated to the boron in this BF3 and you're going to form this compound here. So basically, um, your NH3 here is going to be um, acting as your base. Okay, it's going to be donating electrons to the acid, which is your BF3. Okay, so this is my base, this is my acid, okay, and this is the product that you would get. So the Lewis model, as I said, is not going to show up on the AP exam, but we should be familiar with the different definitions. Okay, and so the last model that we're going to be looking at is um, the most useful, the Bronsted-Lowry model. Uh, allows us to explain various different types of acid-base chemistry, and it's very straightforward. Um, so we're going to be focusing on this definition uh, for the remainder of this unit. Okay, so Bronsted-Lowry acids, okay, are going to be proton donors, and the bases, the Bronsted-Lowry bases, are going to be proton acceptors. So guys, remember when I say um, protons, remember I'm talking about H+. Plus. Okay, I'm not talking about the subatomic particle that's present inside um, the nucleus of atoms. Okay. So because the Bronsted-Lowry definition is what we're going to focus on for the remainder of this unit, um, I want to go ahead and share with you guys what the transfers actually look like. Okay, so if we were to take an example such as hydrochloric acid um, and let's say water, Okay, we're going to have an acid and a base present. See, in this case, we have an acid. In this case, we have a base. What's going to happen is the acid is going to behave as a proton donor. Okay, so HCl is going to transfer a H plus ion or a proton to the water molecule. Okay, and that's going to produce for us H3O plus and Cl minus. Okay, and these are known as conjugate acids and bases. Uh, respectively on this right hand side and we'll talk about determining those but as you can see here the acid transfers to the base the proton ion and that base accepts that proton ion and new species are produced in solution so what is a conjugate acid base pair so basically conjugate acid base pairs are molecules or ions that get produced um, when an acid gives a proton to a base. So basically they're related to each other by the transfer of the protons between the acid and base species. Okay, so the conjugate acid, guys, is going to be the substance that forms when a base accepts a proton. Okay, so from our previous example, our H2O was a base and our HCl was an acid. Okay, so when we know that our HCl transferred its proton to the base. So the conjugate acid is going to be the species that gets produced when the base picks up the proton. OK, 
Okay, so H2O here has two hydrogens. Now, if it picks up an extra proton, it's going to have three of them. So on this right-hand side, that is where we see our conjugate acid, okay, because it now has an additional proton that it picked up from the acid. Now, our conjugate base um, is going to basically be the leftovers after the acid gives away its proton. Okay, or protons. In this particular case, HCl only has a single proton to give away because it's a monoprotic acid. So the remainder is going to be the chloride ion. So if we go ahead and we look over on this right hand side, the leftover is that chloride ion and it is therefore our conjugate base. So this is how we identify our conjugate acid and base. Um, we basically look at the starting species, determine whether they're an acid or a base, and then subsequently apply what we see up here. Okay, now we'll talk in more detail about how we decide which one of these is going to behave as an acid and which one's going to behave as a base, um, but we need to talk about acid strength and base strength in a later lecture. Okay, so if we do a little bit more practice, a little couple more examples, they want us to basically figure out the conjugate bases or conjugate um, acids for the examples uh, below. So in this first row, we're going to be looking at the conjugate bases. So HCl is an acid. So the conjugate base is going to be whatever is left over after it gives away its H+. So Cl- minus in this case is the conjugate base. Okay, so in the example of this ion here, if it gives away its proton, you're going to get SO4 2 minus. Okay, and if this acid or this behaves as an acid, my conjugate base is going to be NH3. Okay, so now that we've determined each of the conjugate bases from the acids above, let's go ahead and let's do the reverse process. So um, basically they've indicated that we have bases here um, and they want us to determine the conjugate acid. Okay, so assuming that only one proton is picked up, in each of these cases the bases are going to take on a proton. So remember the protons have an H plus charge, so um, our carbonate ion is going to become bicarbonate. All right, notice the charge change. Now we've added an H plus ion. Okay, um, in this example we're going to pick up a proton. The acetate ion is going to pick up a proton and give us acetic acid. Okay, and of course in the case of NH3 we're going to go to the ammonium ion. Okay, so basically you need to think about what uh, the formation of the conjugate base means relative to the original acid, and you need to think about what the formation of the conjugate acid means relative to the original base. Um, and if you guys can do that, you'll be fine at uh, predicting your products for acids and bases.